What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Clint from the Die Hard MMA Podcast. This is the total takedown for UFC Vegas 41. And we've had a couple of fill-in fighters step up and take their place, so this card has gotten massive. You may understand how this thing works. We're talking sides and totals. We're not talking sides today. We're talking totals today. We are looking to bet and find value, not picking a fighter. Let's dig on into the card. Starting at the bottom, we've got one of those replacement fighters. UFC veteran Jonathan Martinez welcoming Zavid Zalasvili to the octagon. And what we've got here is a total set at two and a half rounds. The over two and a half is minus 145. The under two and a half is plus 115. This is a bit of a tough spot. Jonathan Martinez is a guy that has very, very slick striking. This guy is deadly on the feet. We know he's got a good submission game tucked in his back pocket as well, so you can't count him out on the ground. Zavid is a UFC newcomer, and a lot of people don't know what he does or haven't seen him, but let me tell you, he's a classic Georgian warrior. This guy reminds me a lot of a little miniature Marab. He likes to take people down, grind on them, beat on them once they're on the floor, and then open up that submission opportunity later on. So this is a spot where I expect Zavid to come in here and be looking to put Martinez on his back. If that's the case, I think Jonathan Martinez will know what to do and be enough of a handful off of his back to cause problems for Zavid's offensive ground and pound and submission game. I don't know that Zavid is going to step into the UFC and get a big highlight finish over Jonathan Martinez in his very first fight. Likewise, Zavid has been super tough, super durable. He hasn't really fought anybody, but I can see him surviving in the feed exchanges with Jonathan Martinez. I think this fight's going to the judges' scorecards. I'm not planning on betting this one because there's so many questions surrounding the newcomer here, but I'd be looking over two and a half. That's about minus 145 at this point in time. That's the only way I could look at this one. No women's strawweight fight coming up next. Uh, Lavinia Souza taking on Random Marcos. Total set at two and a half. Over two and a half is minus 275. The under two and a half is about plus 235, it looks like. And, uh, I mean, we got to go women's MMA over here, right? Uh, Randa Marcos is someone who's been very tough to finish. She's been submitted once or twice. She's never been knocked out. She's got a ton of losses by decision, though. She fights very closely with her opponents. Good boxing, not a lot of knockout power. One or two submissions on her record. They seem kind of more of fluke events than really much anything else. Lavinia Souza, she's got an excellent ground game. When she is the hammer, she likes to destroy people on the feet. She hits hard. She's tough. She's crazy durable. And as long as she's not fighting Amanda Lemos, she seems to have a good enough time taking and absorbing damage. I think this is going to be a close back and forth fight. Lavinia Souza probably looking for the wrestling. Random Marcos trying to keep it on the feet and using that boxing. I'm not necessarily expecting a finish from anybody unless one of these women gets put on their back and we get like the women's MMA armbar from guard situation. Let's look over two and a half. Definitely passing, not betting this one for me. Men's flyweight fight coming up next. Jeff Molina taking on Daniel Lacerda. And this is another fight where I've got just a ton of questions. We know about Jeff Molina. He's tough. He's durable. He's gritty. He's a glory MMA guy. And he's welcoming Jeff Les uh, Daniel Lacerda to the UFC. Lacerda seems to be a bit of a submission specialist. He's definitely a finisher. He's only got one loss on his record. This seems to be the type of fight where you've got the makings of violence, in my opinion. Total set at two and a half. The over is minus 140. The under is plus 120. And if I was going to bet this one, I'd definitely be looking at that under. Lacerda starts quick. He likes to hunt those finishes and hunt them early. And Jeff Molina is the kind of guy that he pulls his very best Rocky Balboa. He likes to take everything you've got and the kitchen sink. And then he fires back at you once you decide to slow down just a little bit. I can see Lacerda finishing this early if he gets it down. Down on the ground. I could see him slowing down and just getting beaten pillar to post by Jeff Molina if he can't get that done. So I think both guys absolutely have some finishing upside. Plus 120 for the under two and a half. That'd be the way I'd look. You're going to see a lot of violence on this card, folks. Middleweight fight up next. I'm sorry, out of order. Lightweight fight up next. Comma worthy. Taking on Jai Herbert. And uh, what do you want me to say about this one? Both these guys have chin issues. Both these guys are major strikers. Kama Worthy's got some slick submissions on him. Jai Herbert, not the best grappler. Absolutely 1,000% finishing upside on this one from both parties. Total set at 1.5, though, is where this thing gets a little bit tricky. The over 1.5 is even money, plus 100. The under 1.5 is minus 120. What we've seen sometimes is when you've got a guy that's taken a couple of bad knockout losses, they switch up that game plan just a little bit. Karma Worthy is coming off of two really bad knockout losses, and I could actually see him coming out here and implementing a grappling heavy game plan. 
if he does that, he might look like a minus 500 favorite if we're being honest. This guy could come out, take Jai Herbert down, and then just outclass him with his submission offense on the mat, and that leads us to a finish. If they stand and bang, or if Kama Worthy doesn't have the wrestling to get those takedowns, I think Jai Herbert pops him on the feet, and we can never count out the ridiculous fight-changing power of someone like Kama Worthy. The knockout is definitely on the table on his side. I would be looking under. Uh, one and a half sketches me out just a little bit, because I like those two and a halfs a little bit better. But the under two and a half alternate total at minus 230, or simply the fight doesn't go the distance at minus 330, I think that's a parlay piece. Do with that as you will. Violence all day, baby. Middleweight fight, Jamie Pickett taking on Leonardo Staropoli. Total set at 2.5. Over is minus 225. The under is plus 185. Jamie Pickett, a guy that's shown to be very, very durable, except for his last fight when he fought the Beverly Hills Ninja. Leonardo Staropoli, similarly durable, but he's fighting up at 185 in this spot. He's not really a natural 185-er. I think Jamie's got some more power upside than he does. We've seen Leonardo Staropoli just try and take people out of there and can't quite get it done. He's been rocked a couple times himself, but he's never been knocked out. He's hurt some people, never been able to knock them out either. I agree with this over. I think over's the play Minus 225 to the over two and a half should be good to go because Jamie Pickett should be able to survive whatever star pole he's bringing to the table or grapples his way to a decision win. Women's strawweight fight, Tabitha Ricci taking on Maria Oliveira. And I know we always talk about it. There's one or two fights where you end up not picking a total, where we talk about picking a side. And I think this is Tabitha Ricci all day. Uh, Maria Oliveira does not have any takedown defense. She's not able to stop the takedowns. And if you can't stop the takedowns, you're not going to be able to stop Tabitha Ricci. Total here is set at 2.5. The over is minus 140. The under is plus 105. And I'd be looking under, but I think this is the spot where you go Tabitha Ricci inside the distance or by submission because Maria Oliveira has to defend the takedowns. And here's the thing. It sounds like I'm completely counting her out in this fight because I honestly kind of am. She's fought a terrible level of competition. Her last two fights are an 0-0 and an 0-1 opponent. And she showed no improvements in her takedown game whatsoever in any of her recent fights. So we have nothing to go off of to believe that she can stop those takedowns. Now here's the kicker. If she can stop the takedowns, she's tall, she's long, she's a good striker, and maybe she does what Manon Fjord did to Tabitha Rigi, and she's capable of knocking her out and stopping her on the feet. So the under 2.5 isn't dead even in that case, but this is women's MMA, and we know these over 2.5s are generally somewhere in the ballpark of minus 300. The value argument is absolutely there for the over 2.5 minus 140. I'm not betting this one. I'd be moving right along. Lightweight fight, Mason Jones welcoming David Onama to the UFC. This is the other fill-in that we got. Happy to see that Mason Jones is still on the card here. And we've got Mason Jones, a guy that's fully capable of just destroying people with his gas tank. He breaks them over the course of 15 minutes. David Onama on the flip side of this thing, very young, very green, 8-0, undefeated. So we've never seen him actually lose. We don't know how that works. He could be tough. He could be incredibly durable. He could be awful. We've got a total at 1.5. Over 1.5 is minus 120. Under 1.5 is uh, minus 110. So about a pick him at the 1.5 round mark. And I'm kind of shocked at that, actually. I'd be looking over. I'd be looking over pretty clearly. I mean, Mason Jones might be able to take this guy down and sub him pretty much immediately, but I've seen him have some defensive skills on the ground. I could see Mason Jones taking him down, wearing on him, and getting a late finish, or even this thing grinding over to the cards. If you're going to bet that one, I'd be looking over one and a half. Middleweight fight, Ju Young Park taking on Gregory Rodriguez. Sorry for the pace of this one, folks. We've got a lot of fights to get to, and I am trying to burn through them as quickly as possible possible so this is a quick video for you today over two and a half minus 155 under two and a half is plus 135 and this is a spot where both guys are just incredibly durable Gregory Rodriguez is going to be the finishing side Jun Young Park doesn't finish anybody he's got a nice jab he's got good wrestling but he's a minute winner he's a grinder whereas Gregory Rodriguez on the flip side of this thing is a guy that likes to take people out he's got heavy hands he's got slick submissions big blast double leg takedowns but I could see this thing stalling out in a grappling situation on the mat once it hits the floor I don't have much interest in this one I think the line is set about right and you know the rule both fighters got to contribute to our undercashing if we're going to take a violence bet. And Joe Young Park, he's not a guy that contributes to an undercashing. He's only been finished in the UFC once, and that was by submission. I do think there's a path for Gregory Rodriguez to win by submission, but that's 9-1. to one. Why wouldn't you just play the sub prop instead of taking an under 2.5 at plus 135 when, realistically, Joe Young Park is never finishing Gregory Rodriguez? 
So I'm going to say over for the purposes of this show, but I like that nine to one on the sub prop. Lightweight fight, middleweight, I'm sorry, lightweight, light heavyweight. Jeez, if I could get the title right of this one. We've got Nicholas Negamariano taking on Ike Villanueva. And this just spells violence all over it. Total set at one and a half. Pick them price tag, minus 110 over and under on this one. Pick your poison, folks. You can go over one and a half on this one, arguing the durability of Negamarianu, or you can go under one and a half saying this is going to be a car crash. I do personally think that it's going to be a car crash. I can knock out just about anybody, and we have seen him in a slugum type of brawl before where he ends up on the wrong side of it. I'd have to go under the minus uh, 110 here at the one and a half round mark, but I'm going to say I don't love it. Welterweight fight, Francisco Trinaldo taking on Dwight Grant. We've got the ageless wonder, Francisco Trinaldo. Dwight Grant, a guy in desperate need of a win to really establish himself as a UFC caliber fighter, taking on a 40-year-old man here. Total set at 2.5. The over is minus 175. The under is plus 130. And again, this is a spot where I would love to say violence. I would love to say under because both these guys are capable of finishing. Dwight Grant's got some big knockout power. So does Trinaldo. Trinaldo's got a good submission game and he's a strong wrestler. We haven't seen Dwight Grant off of his back all that much. So there's chances for this thing to finish. But the problem is nobody knocks out Francisco Trinaldo. I've heard a couple people this week talk about Dwight Grant knocking out Francisco Trinaldo. And I just don't know where they're getting the evidence of that. I know Dwight Grant hits hard. I like Dwight Grant. I really do. But how you think he's going to knock out Trinaldo when no one's been able to cut it so far, it just kind of baffles me how people are jumping to that this week. Unless Francisco Trinaldo is suddenly old and drops off a cliff, I don't see it. I'd be looking over 2.5, minus 175. Featherweight fight, Alex Bruce Leroy Caceres taking on Sung Woo Choi in this event here. Big, big Twitter battle going on on this one. Over 2.5, minus 220. Under 2.5 is plus one. 80. And this is kind of pick your fighter, right? If you go under two and a half, you're probably thinking Choi gets it done with his hands. The dude hits hard. If you go over, then you're thinking Alex Caceres probably grinds his way to a uh, decision win. Sungwoo Choi could absolutely win this thing on the judges' scorecards as well, though. So I do think the over two and a half holds more value. There's a, a school of thought out there that thinks Alex Caceres can take Choi down and submit him. Given the level of competition he's faced in the UFC without tapping, uh, I don't necessarily believe that, and I don't think Alex Caceres is that good of a submission fighter. I think Sung Woo Choi will win the minutes on this one, and if Bruce Leroy is able to take those big shots, we probably see a decision. I don't like the minus 225 price tag, but I'll say over. Women's Bantamweight fight, Jessica Rose Clark taking on Jocelyn Edwards. Very, very similar to the other women's MMA fight that we broke down on this one. Jessica Rose Clark has been training with Deron Wynn and Daniel DC Cormier, some of the best wrestlers in the UFC, and she is physically strong. That's what she does. Jocelyn Edwards, she's a slick striker. She's pretty damn strong herself. She's tall, she's long, but you know what? She struggles with the takedowns, and that's exactly where I think we're going to see this fight take place is on the ground. We got a total set at two and a half. Here's a more classic women's MMA total. Over two and a half is minus 350. The under is plus 250. And believe it or not, I do think there is some opportunity for violence on this spot because Jessica Rose Clark is mean. She hits hard. She is strong. She is nasty. And if she can get Jocelyn Edwards on the mat, she can pound her into oblivion. I absolutely believe that. If she cannot get those takedowns, Jocelyn Edwards is the type of fighter that will light her up on the feet. So I think there's a chance for violence here in that plus 250 price tag is one that I don't necessarily hate considering both these women have some serious upside in the finishing ability. Not saying it's a lock, not saying it's one of my favorite bets on the card or anything like that, but when it comes to women's MMA and especially this card, that's kind of one of the under violence bets that's giving you the right number to take that dice roll if you like it. Lightweight fight for the co event, Grant Dawson taking on Rick Glenn. Dawson is an absolute monster, 17-1. and one. Rick Glenn, lots of questions about this guy. He's been gone for a long time. We saw him come back for about 30 seconds. We still don't really know what he's fully capable of. 2.5 is where the round is set at this point. Over 2.5, minus 150, under 2.5, plus 110. And I am extremely tempted on the violence here. Rick Lynn is the type of guy that can end somebody's night and end it in a hurry if he gets on top of them or if he manages to land the right shot on the feet. 
Grant Dawson is another one of these guys that just breaks you with pressure and pace. And we've seen Rick Glenn tap out more than once, even though he's not a guy that gets knocked out. You know what? Grant Dawson knocked a guy out in his last fight that's not a guy that gets knocked out. This kid is improving. He's getting better and better. He's got the right coaches with Glory MMA. James Krause makes those in-fight adjustments to give him the best opportunity to get that finish. I think Grant Dawson finishes Glenn, but I also think there's a chance that Glenn, he's the type of guy that comes out here and could pull something nasty and tricky, even though we haven't seen Dawson and be the type of guy that gets finished we can't say that it's never going to happen and glenn is the type of veteran that might be able to pull that off i'd be looking violence under two and a half is plus 110 main event time paulo costa taking on marvin vittori total here set at four and a half rounds the under four and a half is minus 130 the over four and a half is plus 110 and they're all over this one folks under four and a half minus 130 has got to be the move it's going to be hard for this fight to get to a decision because paulo costa catch weight of 195 is going to have some extra gas in the tank he's going to have some extra energy here and coming off of that embarrassing loss to israel adesanya you're going to want to think he's probably going to push the pace he's probably going to come out hard and in the fight early because that's how he wins every time it's a first or a second round knockout marvin vittori is a guy that you simply do not knock out now he's probably going to be at a slight size disadvantage at this point especially with that weight cut issue but this guy's a grinder he's a nasty durable fighter that we've yet to see really on skates or that badly hurt in the ufc so if he can take a couple of those early shots he's going to wear out costa and i know costa's not a guy that generally gets finished but can we see this mountain of muscle deep in the fourth round off of his back getting chain wrestled Really putting up much of a fight against Vittori, who just goes to town on people once he gets them on the mat? Personally, I don't. I think both guys finish, and even though Marvin Vittori's durability is a slight question mark as far as can this uh, take away from the under two and a half cashing, it absolutely can. But Paulo Costa is also called the eraser for a reason. If this guy hits him on the right spot early with a weight advantage, he could be the one that gets it done. The under four and a half minus 130 is the place to go and that one might make my card good luck everybody that's the total takedown be sure to comment down here let me know what your favorite total for this week is sub here to pub sports radio if you haven't already and smash the hell out of that like button for me you have no idea how much that helps us good luck on all your degenerate action this week and let's roll